The ruins alone were impressive enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There's something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the Void's corrupting influence, but I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? And how would you do that? The gate is still too small for any of us to pass through. Estinian is correct, which is why I've elected to send a familiar in our stead. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm, from river flow and life be born. Water, water, frost and fire! Ready your arms. I fear she's been possessed. Oh, come now. That was adorable. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve us well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, Your Excellency? Ah, 
Yes, of course. We should also be wary of void scent slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nadana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. Let us begin, shall we? I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side! Thank you, little one. You did well. Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. Reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's one on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones.
Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second familia was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh, yes. That can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then.
Hey, Stola! The adjustments are going well, I hope. Tis a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination? My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. created a bond between us, even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion, and not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am Satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nabdeen, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet... Now you listen to me, Vashan! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, 
I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together, safe and happy. And I hope that you and your sister can be together again too. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you, and here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Rajadhan. My people, I have come to a decision. Bashan will depart Thavnir for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry.
this world bereft of savings. <laughs>